when you're born into this life, don't assume you understand life or reality and don't look to others for answers about how to get the mediocre results that they're getting because everybody around you is basically getting mediocre results in their life. Even if they're successful, they're still getting mediocre results in terms of their internal mood, emotional states and their consciousness and their psychology. But the, the real question here is, it's a meta question that you ask. You don't start off life by saying, okay, well, let me just go become a computer programmer or let me become a doctor or let me become an engineer or let me go get married or let me have a bunch of sex or let me get a bunch of money, become a businessman on Wall Street. These are all the wrong questions. The first question, the most fundamental question you have to ask is, why am I here? What's going on in the biggest possible picture perspective? What's worthwhile doing and what isn't? What are the traps? And what am I? How does my machine work? If I think of myself as a machine, how do I work? What makes me tick? And so most of your energy should be devoted, not externally towards running around and doing crazy stuff in the world and having fun and entertainment and going to parties and getting into relationships and falling in love. No, all of that is distraction. The true core of life, if you want to live a good life, is to turn your gaze inwards and to ask deep penetrating questions about how to live life and how your machine works. And basically what I've discovered throughout my 15 year journey or so through self-help and spirituality is that all of our problems stem fundamentally from a lack of mastery of this machine. and specifically of the mind. The mind. The mind, its power is very much underappreciated and underestimated by most people because we live under what's known as the materialist paradigm where we tend to believe that we're living in a material, objective, three-dimensional world that exists independent of our minds and that our minds play some role within reality, but a, a minor role, basically. And that there's not very much that the mind can do to change reality. This is dead wrong. You couldn't be more wrong. This is one of the most pernicious assumptions and latent beliefs that people hold that creates that glass ceiling beyond which they can never grow beyond maybe one or two or three percent of their true potential as a human. You have to start to see that the way that everybody around you is living their life, including your family members, brothers and sisters and parents, your friends, your teachers, your coworkers, your bosses, the celebrities that you see on television, the YouTubers that you admire on YouTube and elsewhere, Instagram models and so forth, that this, this, is, this is not how to live life. This is all idiocy. These people are not truly tapping into the potential of a human in living life. And ultimately, what do you want in life? What is it you want? You see, because we assume that, well, you know, Leo, it's studying the outer world that's really challenging. Like studying science is hard, studying math is hard, you, you know, exploring the moon and Mars, outer planets in the solar system. This is difficult stuff. But don't we already know like what we want and who we are? This is these sorts of questions. What, what use can come from these sorts of questions? They seem very abstract and philosophical and kind of fluffy, airy-fairy, not very tangible. You couldn't be more wrong. You have no idea what you are. On every level, you don't know yourself at the physical level at the psychological level, at the emotional level, at the spiritual level, you don't really understand yourself. And of course, if you think about it, why would you? You were born into this life, but you don't know how you were born. You don't really know where you came from or why you appeared. You just mysteriously appeared out of nowhere one day. Here you are. Society gave you some stories about where you came from and how you got here and how it's all normal and there's nothing weird and mysterious going on and it's all not very special. But life is very, very special. If you just take a moment to, to really reflect upon it and 
in solitude. Life is very special. It's very mysterious. It's not quite clear how you got here. It's not clear where you're going and how to get there and where you're going to go in the ultimate end after you die. So, uh, the key is to turn your attention inwards and to start to question how your mind influences how you see reality. Your mind is what generates all of your results in life. Now, we're going to be talking about multiple levels of development here. We're going to be talking about some advanced potential for spiritual stuff. So when I'm talking about the ultimate potentials, I'm, I'm talking about advanced spirituality. But even before we get to that, there are earlier levels of just self-improvement and self-actualization, which are, are just more simple and down-to-earth and more practical. And they can be just something as simple as learning how to take care of yourself financially. Stop being a wage slave, becoming financially independent, or dealing with your creative anxiety if you're an artist, so that you can do better art, or dealing with some emotional attachments that you have so that you can have nicer relationships, or getting over certain fears that you have about starting a business or whatever. This is all this is all great stuff. This is where you start. But but notice, no matter what level you're at, it's your mind that is the gatekeeper. Because it, it's through your mind that you interact with all of reality. Nothing comes to you other than through your mind. Everything. All the people you interact with, all the, all the stuff you learn, whether you're learning science or history, that's coming through your own mind. Your mind is interpreting that stuff. It's not just receiving raw facts and objective data from the world. You're constantly interpreting, making meanings out of it, throwing away and ignoring things, filtering stuff out, coloring things with your own biases. And uh, putting your intentions and goals and objectives on certain things, pursuing certain things while avoiding other things, this is all the work of your mind. So, if you've been living an ordinary, mediocre life up to this point, getting rather mediocre results and suffering for it, and the suffering could look like depression, anxiety, a lack of results. It could look like sexual frustration. It could look like wage slavery. It could look like being stuck at your job and hating it. It could look like motivational problems, health problems, emotional problems, addictions, uh, a feeling of, of laziness and listlessness about life, a lack of passion for life. All of this. You know how you develop passion for life? By taking control of yourself and making yourself into a self-help project. That's how you become passionate about life. That's the work we're doing here. There's a lot to this work. This is a, a multi-decades long project. This is not something you do for a few years to get a quick result, and then you stop. This is something you do for the rest of your life. In fact, this is what gives life its zest and its juice. Without this, life becomes utilitarian. At some point, once you get your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your husband or your wife or your car or your house or your business or whatever, then life just becomes about maintaining that. It becomes a grind. And then that itself becomes a form of depression and suicidal thoughts and feeling of being trapped and frustrated and all that. Because you're living life at this very utilitarian survival level where you're just surviving like an animal. That needs to stop. You need to pursue life beyond survival. That doesn't mean that you ignore survival needs. You have survival needs, many of them, sexual ones, financial ones, emotional ones, material ones. By all means, those need to be intelligently satisfied within reason and limits. But, uh, but your eye needs to be on the prize. The prize of life is living beyond survival. It's living for something deeper. connecting with life itself on an emotional, intuitive, spiritual level. That's what makes life satisfying. 